All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of Indigenous Insights. My name is Mitch. In the studio, we have Austin Ayers from the KBIC NRD. Austin, how's it going? Great. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. So what is your, first of all, what's your job title over there? Uh, I'm the wildlife technician for the KBNRD. Very cool. And tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be in that position. Um, well, I grew up here. I'm from Zeba. Um, Zeba. Yeah, Zeba, right? Shout out Zeba. Uh, spent a lot of my time hunting and fishing as a kid. Um, you know, I was raised in the traditional Anishinaabe way of uh, living in harmony with the earth practically. And I also, uh, my dad is an avid hunter. He's not Anishinaabe, but, you know, he has those sort of uh, similar cultural values of, you know, going in the woods and being part of that. So uh, as my life went on, I started working in uh, natural resources, specifically at the NRD at the age of 14. I did uh, fisheries until I was about 19, and then I left. Well, <laughs> part-time-ish, you know. Was, I, that through, uh, was that through tribal youth? Yeah, that's actually through the tribal youth program. That's how I started there. And then I became a college intern, actually, well, through the program. And then now I'm a full-time employee. Very cool. Yeah. That's how I ended up here. Awesome, yeah. That's it's a, a, that's, it's that's a great a, program. It is. I mean, it, it puts a lot of people on a good path. It really, yeah. And truly, it like, inspired my path of like coming home and you know, kind of like realizing who I wanted to be and what I wanted to be in the community. So, Very cool. And you're here to talk about something pretty big. A lot of people have heard what you're here to talk about today. Tell us a little bit about what that subject is. Okay. Uh, I'm actually here for chronic wasting disease, um, also known as CWD. It's a contagious, fatal uh, neurological disease that affects um, cervids, which for us that includes deer, moose, elk. You know, we don't necessarily have a lot of moose and elk, but we are very concerned about the deer. Um, CWD is a form of a disease that's called prion diseases. Um, It causes uh, proteins to misfold inside of your body and and especially inside of your brain. So it kind of leads to like a deteriorated uh, neurological condition, Almost, almost like a... You can consider it like an Alzheimer's S effect. Okay. Yeah. And you were kind of telling me a little bit that the reason that you're here talking about this is um, because it's kind of like the you were talking about fear-based things. Yeah. So you're here to educate because, of course, it is something that we got to be wary of, but yeah. it can't have that over-the-top fear of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we live in this world right now where something like COVID has affected us all, and, you know, there's a lot of fear around that. And I think it's uh, based on a lack of understanding. So I think that kind of correlates with uh, CWD for the fact that people, you know, are worried that it might come and, you know, kill all the deer. But that's not necessarily true. And uh, as long as we take a proactive approach and, you know, educate our community and ourselves mostly uh, about how to effective ways to manage this sort of disease, um, we'll be in good we'll be in good heads. We'll be in good health. We'll be you know, able to continue to live on with the deer and be able to continue our cultural practices. Very cool. So what is that proactive course? What are we doing here? So we're taking uh, uh, that, that sort of course that we're taking here with the University of Minnesota Center for Prion Research. They reached out to us to interview community members about what they understand and what they know about CWD, but also their hunting practices and how that pertains to stopping the spread of uh, things like CWD and other wildlife disease, you know, because it's not just, you know, we don't want to focus on CWD, but that is the focus of this project. There is a lot more going on all, all the time. So it's a sort of, you know, open open everybody's eyes that there there is things like COVID, you know, for the animals and sort of that, that sort of deal. So it's important for us to keep an eye on them and maintain their health for our cultural practices and for, you know, maintaining our ecosystem. You know, we have one of the most diverse, most beautiful ecosystems here in the whole entire world. And I think a lot of people take that for granted. So they do. So what point of the process are we in now then with uh, the project? Okay. Uh, I've started doing interviews. I've reached out to every single council member. I've actually interviewed um, Mr. Swartz, our our, uh, chairman up there. He uh, was, you know, a great support for this project. And, you know, I had to get it approved through council. So he was one of our big backers and it it was a, it felt good actually to you know be involved with that sort of uh, level up there and have them uh, you know acknowledge that we're doing good work and as the, as it goes on you know I'm interviewing as many people as I can in the community whether they be hunters or not whether they're tribal members or not um, you know people that are interested in wildlife people that care about the environment people that you know they they would spend their time in the woods they're not necessarily so glued to their phone like everybody else you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, are you uh, looking for volunteers for interviews then? Or you? Oh just... uh, yeah, I'm actually looking for volunteers uh, to do participate in the interviews. Um, of course, you know we want people that are interested. We we are looking for sort of uh, traditional understandings of you know why why we would want to manage the deer and why we would want to maintain our, this sort of uh, healthy ecosystem for not just you know scientific purposes but you know our traditional ecological knowledge. Is there a number or email yeah, to get a hold of you? Absolutely. Um, you guys can email me at a airs. That's a a y r e s at kbic nsn dot gov, or you can um, call or text me at nine zero six three nine five one eight six nine. Any sort of questions, I can even send you the interview question list if you want to look through them, and then you can decide if you'd like to participate in the interview. Uh, I- even if you have any sort of questions about uh, wildlife in general, feel free to contact us. You know, we are we are the community scientific vessel. That's what the Natural Resource Department is out there in Pequaming. Like, that's what we want to be for our people. We want to use Western science and traditional ecological knowledge, and we want to meld them and create, you know. Do, uh, tho- do those two worlds come together better than people think? Yeah, a lot better than people think. And you know what? Um, a lot of the things that we find in traditional ecological knowledge is it's it's the it's the sort of base for western science you know western science wouldn't exist without the sort of thinking that we have of you know why why would we even care about the deer health you know that comes from us and that comes from our conservation efforts and that comes from our sort of way of life and thinking about you know we're not we're not the only animals around we're not living here by ourselves we're living here with them and yes. they're living here with us so so you mentioned you were an avid woodsman growing up and stuff. So you must have had a little bit of pre-knowledge on the the CWD, like many people do. Yeah. Uh, what's been the most surprising thing that you've learned getting more into it? Um, well, it, it's I guess it goes back towards the uh, sort of being afraid of it. Yep. I was always afraid of it, you know, like oh no, like what's going to happen to the deer? But you know, the more I read and the more I understand, and especially through my work, I've I've come not to fear it so much and to understand that they're. There are ways to avoid it, or not even avoid it, but ways to diminish it and, you know, sort of uh, keep it under control so that, you know, we're not worried about eating unhealthy deer or, you know, having an unhealthy food source, because that's what this is to us. It's a food source. Yep. A, a tasty food source. A very tasty food source. So something that you said before we got in the air that, that I thought was kind of interesting was uh, if a deer does come down with CWD, you almost got to kind of look at it as that belongs to CWD now. Yeah, essentially, um, you know, we don't want to ever look past the fact that there's things that we can't see that are still living beings. You know, creators still put a lot, whole lot of stuff here that we don't understand. And, you know, that's that's sort of uh, looking into the Western science side, you know, of looking through a microscope and knowing that there's these little organisms that, you know, they're claiming this as their food source. They need it to survive as well. And whether that be harmful to our way of life or not, it's it's beneficial to them. It's beneficial to this sort of, uh, it's just a protein structure, basically, is what it does. And it's the simplest, one of those little simple molecules, but it's something to acknowledge of, you know, we're, we're, the world is infinitely smaller and infinitely bigger, and, you know, we don't have claim over all of it. We're, we, you know, we're not the masses of this universe. and never will be. I like it. I like that. All right, so once again, we're here talking about CWD. Do you have... Do you have any facts for us at the moment? Like, what's CWD look like in our area or, like, in our yeah, state? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, there's only been one reported case, and it was in Dickinson County. Uh, they believe that it crossed over from the Wisconsin counties. And so, it's not very prevalent here in the UP, but it's it's not, a, it's not like a matter of if anymore. It's a matter of when. It's okay. one of those kind of deals. Like, we are expecting it to come here eventually. And that's just through deer traveling and, you know, people spreading it by traveling with carcasses and stuff. And so looking at those sort of management practices and hunting practices especially and how to stop that. But uh, for here, you know, just to, just to give you guys a, an idea for, to diminish the sort of fear, fear-based fear thinking, um, what I, in my reading I've discovered that uh, a freeze and thaw cycle for the soil is good for diminishing the prions. So... The prions can be transferred to the soil via fecal matter, via saliva, whatever, from the deer shedding. Um, and it stays there in the soil. And, th- and that's another way it can affect uh, other deer. And that's kind of where that no-bait mandate came from. Of They okay. didn't want deer piling up and sticking their nose in the dirt in one spot. So, uh, But having the lake here 
and uh, the winters that we have with the freeze and thawing of the soil, that's uh, sort of a natural natural barrier that we have to preventing CWD and its spread. Uh, as the as the soil freezes and thaws, you know, it diminishes. So we, you know, we're thankful for the lake again in many ways. So, so can you? How do you measure? How is the measurements taken? I mean, is it just from the deer carcasses and like? people bringing them in right yeah so there is testing available and it comes out of uh mostly in the brain and in the spinal fluid so uh, um you know we want to advise people not to not to touch the brain i know a lot of people do brain brain tan hiding yep or that that sort of thing of brain tanning man Um, marty martin reinhardt yeah for the ddp he almost got us eat deer brains yeah so and that's one thing we kind of want to discourage now is like you know that's that's (laughs) where we should stay away from but you know you know, Marty might have some sort of traditional ecological knowledge that I don't, and he might have a better understanding of uh, a way to approach it. But, you know, from Western science, it says, you know, don't don't touch the brain, don't touch the spine. You don't do as little sawing as you can. That's one of the things they said. Sawing? Yeah, don't saw the bones. Okay. Because uh, that'll open up their sort of spinal fluid and it's in their, you know, their uh, mo- bone marrow. Yeah. And, um yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot what the question was. That's right. We're just we're just chatting now because okay. I yeah. mean this is where we get kind of the interesting things. What about some of the phys- say someone sees a deer? What's mm. that deer going to look like if they have CWD? Okay, uh, it's actually pretty hard to tell just by like uh, physical looking at them. Um, it's it's a really it's a overtime disease, and that's why you sort of heard the comparison to Alzheimer's from me earlier. Is that it happens over time. And it, as it, as it builds up in their system, you know, um, they'll start. To, you'll start to see uh, dramatic weight loss, and that's like where the wasting uh, part of it comes from. They'll look yeah. skinnier, and they'll look they'll look unwell. Um, then you get a lot of neurological symptoms like stumbling, and you know, sort of staring off, or maybe they're licking something repeatedly when they shouldn't be. Um, they drink and urinate excessively when they're uh, with CWD. So if you see a deer that you've just noticing like well, why is it drinking so much water or why is it going to the bathroom so much that might be a sign um typically poor balance and coordination is the dead giveaway that's late stage that's like uh they no longer can control yeah. their brain because it's so it's so uh, got so many holes in it now basically and um inability to swallow it, and that leads to uh aspiration pneumonia and death for them so a lot of those signs are the late late things so yep. that's why it's so important to learn a lot yeah, of this stuff be before. proactive yeah we want to be proactive about it all because you're never going to be able to just look at a deer and say oh that has cwd you're going to have to very very you know, telltale signs of what i just mentioned but uh the only way to really test it is to kill it and to take its head and test the brain and that so all right so one last time as we run out of time here if people want to take part in interview they get a hold of you what's the number and email Okay, uh, phone number is 906-395-1869. That's my cell phone number. You can call or text it. Uh, you know, just send me your name. If you're interested, I can send you the questions. Uh, or an email. It's uh, A-A-Y-R-E-S at kbic-nsn.gov. And again, you know, just send me your name. If you're interested, I'll send you the interview questions. And then you can go from there. You can participate or not. It's up to you. All right. Very. Thank you very much for stopping down. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity.